This is ChestertonRadio.com. J-E-L-L-O! The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Cry Baby Cry. This is the day of the Easter parade, and there's a cheerful feeling in the air. Perky new hats, gay flowers, everything reflects the spirit of carefree spring. It's a day of color, and if you serve jello for your Easter dessert, you were right in the spirit of things. For a shimmering mold of bright, clear jello is mighty gay and cheerful. The glowing reds of strawberry, raspberry, or cherry jello, shiny orange, golden lemon, or sea green lime, you have a regular rainbow to choose from. And no matter which flavor you select, you're short of a masterpiece. For Jell-O, tastes as good as it looks. It's crammed with delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. The flavor from fresh, ripe fruit. It's put there by a special process. It's sealed right in so it can't get out. It's caught and held for you to enjoy the minute you taste a shimmering spoonful. A delight to the eye and a thrill to the taste. That's Jell-O. But be absolutely sure you do get genuine Jell-O with that extra-rich fruit flavor. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. That was Cry Baby Cry played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen... We bring you a man who is celebrating Easter with a new suit, new shirt, new tie, and new shoes that squeak, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, who was also looking for a new announcer. And listen, Don, it was nice of you to mention my Easter outfit, but it so happens that my shoes do not squeak. They might chirp a little because they're happy. <laughs> but they do not squeak. <laughs> Why, Jack, I heard you when you came into the studio. You sounded like a rusty beer sign in the wind. Now, Don, every new shoe has a little something to say, but I repeat, mine do not squeak. All right, then. Just walk around the microphone and see what happens. Okay, Smarty. <laughs> Hmm. Well, what do you think of your shoes now? Well, naturally, they're a little nervous. It's the first time they've ever been on the air. <laughs> but say, Don, now you're kind of dolled up for Easter yourself. That's a nice-looking suit you're wearing. Well, thanks, Jack. I just bought it last week. It's very snappy. Where'd you get it? Well, uh, Art Schaffner and Marks made the pants. Uh, Art Schaffner and Marks. Mm. I knew it wasn't a one-man job. <laughs> Did they, uh... <laughs> Did they uh, make the coat, too? Mm-hmm. Well, Jack, they put in a bid on it, but I finally awarded the contract to the Tri-State Construction Company. <laughs> oh, yes, they also did the Boulder Dam. Or something <laughs> big. Um, say, Don, come here a minute. Right. Uh, look at Phil standing over there. Isn't it disgraceful the way he comes dressed on a holiday? Well, it isn't very good taste. Come here, Phil. What is it, Jack? You want to know a funny thing? Here I bother to get all dressed up for Easter with a new suit and shoes and spend hours fixing myself up. And you come to the studio with slacks, an old sport coat, and no necktie. Yeah, and you want to know another funny thing? What? I still look better than you do. (laughs) You do not. And I'll leave it to anyone here. In fact, I'll leave it to the boys in your band. Which of us is dressed better for Easter? Why do they know they tried to buy firecrackers today? a nice organization you've got. Don't tell me they all thought today was the 4th of July. No, the drummer held out for St. Patrick's Day. Oh. <laughs> yes, I see the shamrock on the symbol. Well, <laughs> Phil, uh, uh, your boys might be mixed up about holidays, but when it comes to music, they're mixed up. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy Easter. Thanks. Same to you, kid. Gee, you look so cute in the Easter parade this morning, all dressed up in your new spring suit. Oh, I wasn't out there to show off or anything. I like to walk down the boulevard on Easter. Everybody does. So you were in the parade this morning, huh, Jack? I certainly was. Huh? You should have seen him, fella, strutting along with a cane on his hand and a flower in his lapel, and he was wearing the swellest derby hat. Oh, Mary. Way down over his ears. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it was a little too big. I bought it before I got my hair cut like a darn fool. <laughs> And you should have seen that funny double-breasted suit he was wearing. Well, what was wrong with it? That coat fit me like a dummy in a window. Well, you should have stayed there. <laughs> well, after all, Mary, I don't have to spend a fortune for a little Easter outfit. You're right, Jack. Yeah. Tell him what happened on the boulevard this morning. Never mind that. <laughs> what was it, Mary? Well, Jack was strutting along in his new suit, proud as a peacock. I was just walking. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, you're silly. Huh? Well, he was walking along, and all of a sudden, a man behind him sneezed. <laughs> He sneezed, eh? And then what happened? Jack's coat shrunk four inches. <laughs> oh, well. Is that right, Jack? Yeah, before I could say Gesundheit, I was nearly strangled. <laughs> anyway, what if it did shrink a little? Who cares? Oh, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Come here a minute, will you? What is it? Well, come over here. It's important. I can imagine. Okay. <laughs> Oh, darn these shoes. Huh? Hey, what's that noise? A squeak at Oxford. <laughs> All right, now what is it, Kenny? Well, I did something last week, and I don't know whether I ought to tell you. Well, you called me over here, didn't you? Well, if I tell you, will you promise you won't fire me for it? Yes, I promise. What did you do? Well, I listened to Fred Allen Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, you mean the guy that wears flower sacks candies? <laughs> Well, Kenny, I don't care who you listen to. I heard Fred Allen, too, Jack, and the way he ran you down, you ought to do something about it. Well, I'll admit he is a bit of a nuisance, but what can I do? Why don't you have him bumped off? <laughs> bumped off? You know, take him for a drive. <laughs> drive? You mean ride. Take him for a drive. Well, you ought to do something about it. Alan keeps saying you're cheap all the time. Oh, he does, eh? Well, he's got a lot of nerve to talk about me. Any man that'll open a can of sardines, eat them, and then save the tails for hash, well... <laughs> Glad I didn't blow that line, too. Don't tell me about that guy. Hmm? He had another thing. He said your toupee didn't fit. Now, that's a big lie because I don't even wear one. Mary, look at the top of my head. What do you see there? A parking lot. <laughs> well, let's forget my head and Alan and everything else. Go ahead and sing your song, Kenny. Okay. Oh, Jack, wait a minute. I just thought of something awful. What's that? Here it is, Easter, and I forgot to write a poem. Well, Mary, what will people think? Now, you go ahead and write one while Kenny sings and work hard on it. Oh, her and her old poems. Oh, yeah, you and your old songs. Well, my songs are better than your poems. Now, children, children. <laughs> sing, Kenny. Oh, me and my new shoes. I'm sorry I tore off that guarantee. Just a fool serenading a mule. She listens carefully to each little tune I play. La bella senorita, she'd love to sing it too if only she knew the way. There's a light in her eye. Though she may try to hide it, she cannot deny there's a light in her eyes. Oh, the charm of her smile, so beguiled Don Diego, that he rode a mile for the charm of her smile. Amigo mio, is she listening to my song? La bella senorita, she'd love to sing it to me if only she knew the way. But why as she may, in her voice there's a flaw. 
And all that the lady can say is Senorita, donkey, chica, not so sweet as a mosquito, but so sweet like my chiquita, you're the one for me. Donkey Serenade from the Firefly, sung by Kenny Baker. Hmm, Donkey Serenade. It's kind of a silly title, isn't it, Kenny? Silly? Sure, after all, who would serenade a donkey? A jackass, Jack. (laughs) Well, (laughs) hey, that's that's right, come to think of it. Hey, Mary, are you coming along with your poem? I need one more verse. I'll be through in a minute. Well, hurry it up. We haven't got anything to do here. Oh, we haven't, eh? Well, ladies and gentlemen, while you're waiting for Miss Livingston's poem, why don't you skip out in your kitchen and prepare a dish of Jell-O? It's tempting, easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors. I'm all finished, John. Well, I'm not. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Look for the big red letters on the box. Oh, happy Easter, happy Easter. You are Well, wait a minute, Mary. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Now, what's the name of your poem? Uh, Easter Greetings by Mary O. Livingston. Now, what's the O for? Oh, happy Easter, happy Easter. (laughs) Hmm. You are with us once again. With your Easter egg so tempting, summer candy, summer hens. Well, well, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, Boys and girls all dressed up pretty parade the streets in every city and all show off their Easter stuff, even though it's on the cuff. (laughs) Now, that's a little too personal, I think, Mary. I like to smell your Easter lilies. Your hot cross buns I love to tackle. Oh. Your rabbits all lay eggs, they say. But, gee, I never heard one cackle. Cackle, tackle. Now, that's just loony. Say, Jack, did Longfellow work with a stooge? No. Then keep still. A <laughs> uh, last verse. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I salute you, happy Easter. With one ship pip and two hurrahs. Until you come next year to greet us, I say farewell. The end. Applause. Well, you got a nice hand there, Mary, but you asked for it. Do you think that's ethical? No, but it's short. Oh, yeah. Well, you got something there. There's nothing like going after it yourself. Say, Jack. Yes, Phil. What are we stalling for? When are we going to do something interesting? Well, Phil, we're doing the best we can. If it's dull here, why don't you pick up your orchestra and go home? That's what I say. (laughs) Thanks, Kenny, and mind your own business. He always comes to at the wrong time. (laughs) What I meant, Jack, are we going to do a play tonight? No, Phil, we don't have to do a play every Sunday night. What is this, a stock company? No, but I just thought we ought to. Well, putting on a play week after week is no picnic, you know. But people seem to like them. Yes, but gee whiz, do you think it's easy? Do you think it's necessary? It's none of my business. (laughs) I'm talking to Phil. Kenneth. Anyway, fellas, I'll tell you what I've planned to do, and it's a surprise. We're going to cut the program short tonight, and I'm going to treat you all to the Al G. Barnes Sells Floto Circus. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, Oh, that's 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 Now, remember, fellas, remember, it's my treat. A man gave me five passes for tonight's show. (laughs) Passes? How'd you get them? Well, I've got a friend with the circus. And besides, I let him put posters up all over my new house. (laughs) I won't be moving in for quite a while, you know. Say, Jack, you know, I happened to drive by your new house last night. It's coming along fine, isn't it? Yeah, and you notice all those circus posters with lions and snakes and zebras all over them? Yes, sir, I threw my jug right out the window. Oh, you did, huh? Well, tonight you're invited to see the real thing. We'll have a lot of fun, too. I'm terribly sorry, Jack. I'd love to go, but I got a blind date tonight. Oh, you and your blind dates. Well, I guess you're stuck, Phil. How about going now, fellas? We'll just about make it. Oh, sure. I think you better hurry. Wait a minute. Come in. Well. Hiya, Buck. Well, hello, Andy. Say, you're just in time. We're all going to the circus, and I got a pass for you, too. You want to come along? Sure, Buck. I got an aunt with that show. She's the bearded lady. Your aunt? How did she happen to become a bearded lady? Oh, she just got tired of shaving one day. (laughs) Oh, well, come on, let's go. Oh, by the way, Andy, I meant to ask you, uh, did your pa buy that airplane you were telling me about? Oh, 
Oh, sure. He's been flying around in it all week. Already? Say, he's learning fast, isn't he? Yeah, too fast. Yesterday he was practicing a loop-the-loop and he fell out. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, lucky thing he had on a parachute. Well, I'll say it was lucky. Too bad he forgot to open it. <laughs> what? My goodness, he fell right down to the ground, eh? Gee, he must have hit it pretty hard. I'll say he did. He swallowed his chew in the back of Well, I'm glad it was nothing more serious. Come on, Jack, let's go. All right, wait, let's see if I've got the passes. Yeah, we're all set. Come on, fellas. All right, all right. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil, take care of the show from now on. Okay. Know? Well, fellas, let's play the next number and go home. What do we play? Oh, anything. Squeaky shoes won't know the difference. <laughs> you ready, boys? Wait a minute. Hold everything. Come in. Mr. Harris? Yes. Have you got a blind date tonight? Yes, I have. Well, don't keep Mama out late. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, boys. Play slow. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> There's a big crowd, so everybody stick close to me. We've got a little time to kill before the big show goes on. Well, what do we do first? I want to see the elephant. I want to get my girl's name tattooed on my chest. <laughs> What's her name, Kenny? Genevieve Carsonborg and Pepper. <laughs> you better get another girl or a bigger chest. <laughs> it's a fine name. Where's the fat lady? I'd like to see her. She'd like to see you, too. <laughs> Hey, she'd go for you. Oh, Jack, what? look at the India rubber man over there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Say, that is the India rubber man. Huh? He must have a cold. A cold? Why? He just tied his nose in a knot. <laughs> Say, I must try that sometime. It'll save handkerchiefs. Hey, huh? fellas, get a load of the wild man of Borneo. Look at him there in that cage. He's a tough-looking mug. Let's go over and talk to him. Goo, 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 goo. Cow! Oh, boy, he is ferocious. Hello, wild man. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, what makes you so wild? It's town hall tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Very well, I can understand that. Balloons, balloons, get them out of there, blown up. Balloons, balloons. Oh, Jack, buy me a balloon. Yeah, I want one, too, that pretty pink one. Say, that is pretty. Do you want a balloon, Kenny? Nah, that's for children. I want a Tom Collins. <laughs> Kenny, you don't even know what a Tom Collins is. I do, too. It's a hard-boiled lemonade. <laughs> All right, stop showing off. Hello, Mr. Benny. Why, Rochester. I thought you was at NBC Broadcasting. Yeah, and I thought you were home where you should be, working. Well, here we are at the circus. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you're here, you can stay. But don't let it happen again. Yes, sir. Say, boss. Well? 
Are you in the mood for a little conference in the field of finance? <laughs> oh, so you're broke again, eh? What happened to that five dollars I gave you last night? The what? I gave you five dollars last night. Now, what did you do with it? I sent that out to fight the recession. <laughs> Now, tell me the truth, Rochester. What did you do with that money? I went to the barber shop. Now, that's ridiculous. How could you spend $5 in a barber shop? The barber threw a seven. <laughs> well, here's a dollar. That's all you're going to get. Now, run along. Thanks, boss. Here I come, Josephine. <laughs> hmm, that boy can't hold on to a dime. See, I'm hungry. I'm going over to get a hot dog. Yeah, me too. I could go for one myself. Hot dogs. Get your hot dogs here. Get them while they're red hot. Hey, I thought you were selling balloons. Well, you taste the hot dog. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, we don't want any. Hey, Jack, look, look. They're lining up the freaks for the sideshow. Right this way, ladies and gentlemen, our sideshow is about to begin. We have with us the greatest and most stupendous aggregation of freaks and curiosities this world has ever seen. Come on, fellas. Let's get a load of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 and now, right over here on my right, we have Elmar, the living skeleton. Why, this man is so thin, we can't weigh him. <laughs> He's blowing off the scale. <laughs> a living skeleton. I'll bet he weighs 150 pounds. Come on, your shoes squeak. <laughs> How does he know? Now, over here on my left, we have Mademoiselle Lulu, the greatest snake charmer that ever made a cobra say uncle. Well, well, hello, Lulu. Hello, Andy. Why, Andy, do you know the snake charmer? Sure, I used to know her when she played with worms. <laughs> oh, way back when, eh? And right over here, we have one of the greatest novelties on the face of the globe. Sailor Smith, the tattooed man. Pictures from head to toe. Tattooed man, why, there's hardly a mark on his body. We sent him to the laundry and shut up. <laughs> shut up yourself, you old windbag. And right over here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new attraction. The man with the pin head. Where? I'm looking at you. <laughs> oh. Why don't you keep quiet, Jack? I'm the nerve of that guy saying I had a head like a pin. Yeah, how could he tell with your hat on? <laughs> wise guy. And now, folks, last but not least, for the real sensation of the evening, we have with us none other than that famous old reactor dancer, <laughs> Prince Zaza, direct from Cairo, Egypt. Yes, sir, she dances. She shakes and she quivers. Oh, boy, that's my dish. Can yep. he? Right inside, folks, Prince Zaza goes on immediately. Come on, fellas, let's go in. Yeah. See you later, you little cut-up. Wait a minute, Jack. We haven't time to go in here. The big show starts right away. Yeah, we got to go over there, darn it. Have you got your passes, Jack? Here they are. I've got to exchange them at the box office. Well, here we are, fellas. Yes, sir. How many? I'd like to exchange these for tickets. I've got five passes. Here you are. Listen, buddy, these passes are good, all right, but not for tonight. These are for the matinee. <laughs> Matinee, the man that gave them to me said they were for tonight. I can't help what he said. These are for the matinee. Matinee or no matinee? So <laughs> fine, how do you? I'm going right home and rip those posters off my house. Go ahead. We're leaving town tonight anyway. <laughs> well, this is the dirtiest trick that I've ever... Move along, buddy. We're holding up the line there. Well, I've never heard of such a rotten thing in all my life. Oh, Jack, why haggle about it? Why don't you buy tickets? Sure, Buck, a couple of dollars won't do Now, that. listen, fellas, it's not the money, it's the principle of the thing. Oh, come on, Jack, come on. If you feel that way about it, I'll buy the ticket. Oh, no, Don, you can take us out to supper later. <laughs> but we're going to get into this circus for nothing. Now, follow me. Hey, the main entrance is over that way. I know what I'm doing. They're not going to put anything over on me. Come on around to the back. <laughs> now, quiet, everybody. I'll show those guys. Now, look nonchalant, fellas. I know what's coming. Now, wait. Now, wait, here's a good place. Lift the tent, Kenny. We'll all crawl under. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, Jack, we don't want to do it. Oh, don't be afraid. Now, come on. Now, listen, fellas. Mary, Kenny, and I will go in first. And, Don, you and Andy can watch until I give you the signal to come in. Now, come on. Follow me under the tent. Woo! Kenny, don't push. Quiet, quiet, everybody. Gee, this is like going to the circus with Harry Lauder. 
All right, here we are, up on your feet. Well, here we are on the inside. What's wrong with this? Hey, Jack, look at these bars over here. What are they for? That's a cage, Kenny. There are lions on the other side. Oh, yeah? Turn around, Jack. Oh, for goodness sake! Oh, hey! Come on, Jack! Hey, hey, wait for me! Jack, Jack, go away! Calling Frank Box! Calling Frank Box! Something new, something different, something swell to eat. And here it is, and you'll all want to try it. It's called Golden Apricot Pie, the most unusual dessert you've served in a long time. Made with delicious orange jello combined with apricots, and it's easy to make, and here's what you do. First, dissolve one package of orange jello in hot water and chill until thickened. Then combine half a pound of cooked dried apricots with a quarter cup of sugar. Fold the apricots into the thickened jello and turn into a cold baked pie shell. Chill until firm, cover with whipped cream, and give your family a grand new treat. For golden apricot pie is really swell. Fragrant, fruit rich orange jello molded with apricots under a blanket of fluffy whipped cream. A beautiful combination to look at, a delicious one to taste. Just be sure to make your apricot pie with genuine jello, for only jello brings you jello's extra rich fruit flavor. So try this delicious new pie for dessert. Order Jell-O from your grocer tomorrow. Number of the 29th program of the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Well, folks, I'm all out of breath, but I got away from that lion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday night we are going to present the highlight of our entire season. We are going to offer our version of Walt Disney's greatest film success, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So be sure and listen in. Say, Jack, have you seen the picture yet? No, Mary, but I'm going to see it tonight. I've got passes. Um, do you want to come along? No, I'm not going to sneak under the Carthay Circle. Good night, folks. Here's an important announcement. Starting this week, Robert L. Ripley's Believe It or Not program will be heard Tuesday night instead of Saturday over most of these same stations. Be sure to see your local newspaper for the new time. Daylight savings begins in some parts of the country next Sunday. This will bring a change in time for the Jell-O program on some of these stations. Consult your local newspaper for schedule of your station. Kenny Baker affairs on the Jell-O program for courtesy of Mervyn Roy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You are listening to Chesterton Radio at chestertonradio.com. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These cakes were dark common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be a level fence. Smoke a lucky. To be a level fence. Yes, to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky, because Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. 
Put you on the right level to feel and do your level best. That's what fine tobacco can do for you. And remember, LSMFT, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So the next time you buy cigarettes, be sure to ask for the cigarette of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. For remember, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. Yes, smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Easter Sunday, and in cities all over the country, people are Easter parading. Right now in Beverly Hills, Jack is getting ready for his stroll down Wilshire Boulevard. At the moment, he's uh, taking a shower, and Rochester is laying out his clothes. Mm, Mr. Benny's been in that shower for a long time. It's funny the way the boss always puts on a bathing cap to keep his hair dry. (laughs) Once it didn't work, he put on the bathing cap and then put his hair on top of it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He looked like a cantaloupe with sideburns (laughs) Well, I I better get his clothes out Say, here's a suit he wore home from New York And I haven't sent it to the cleaners yet I'll take it and... Uh Uh-oh, what's this book that fell out of his pocket? Well, it's Mr. Benny's diary I wonder if I should read it No, I better not he sure got mad the last time I read it. Anyway, if Mr. Benny wanted me to know what he did in New York, he'd tell me. But he's been home over a week and he ain't told me, so here goes. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's the first entry. April 4th. Dear Diary, the flight to New York was exciting. Traveling by airplane is very pleasant, except they give the passengers free food, magazines, and chewing gum. I couldn't sell a darn thing. <laughs> I wonder what he did with that gallon of coffee and four dozen sandwiches uh, he took with him. I arrived in New York this morning, cheerful but bloated. (laughs) I guess he didn't eat all the sandwiches. The next entry is written in peanut butter. (laughs) April 5th, Dear Diary. This morning I was walking down Broadway and ran into Fred Allen. And I must say that Fred looks wonderful. He had all the wrinkles taken out of his face, and luckily they didn't have to use surgery. Fred's face has so so much loose skin, they just pulled his ears back and tied them in a bow. (laughs) With his hat off, he looked like an Easter bunny. (laughs) Mm, Mr. Benny's diary sure is dumb. Two days in New York, and he ain't been to Harlem yet. April 6th. Dear Diary, last night I attended a dinner party at the home of Mr. William Paley. He's the head of CBS. I sat on the right of his lovely wife, Barbara. Mrs. Paley is certainly a charming woman. I wonder what network he got her from. (laughs) April 7th, talk to my sponsor today. Well, now it's getting interesting. April 8th, talk to my sponsor today. April 9th, talk to my sponsor today. April 10th, talk to my sponsor today. April 11th, talk to my lawyer today. (laughs) April 12th, my lawyer, talk to my sponsor today. (laughs) April 13th. My lawyer will be my summer replacement. (laughs) April 14th. Starter for home on the Santa Fe Super Chief. The Super Chief is a wonderful train, but I think I enjoyed the plane trip more. The hostess had prettier legs than the conductor. (laughs) Well, I'll be darned. No mention of Harlem at all. If he didn't go to Harlem, why'd he bother... Oh, Rochester! Rochester! Uh Uh-oh, here he comes. I better hide the diary. 
Rochester, what are you doing? I was looking through this suit to see if it needed to be sent to the cleaners. Oh, well, while I finish dressing, look through the closet, see if there's anything else that needs cleaning. Yes, sir. Uh, what about this gray suit, boss? I don't know. How does it look to you? Well, it's got a gravy stain on the sleeve, salad dressing on the pants, butter on the cup, coffee on the lapel, and meat sauce all over the vest. It has? Yeah, shall I send it to the cleaner or put it in the refrigerator? <laughs> Uh, send it to the cleaner. But first, uh, Rochester, go through the pockets and make sure I didn't leave any money in it. Oh, boss, come now! <laughs> Never mind, just do it. Well, I'm all dressed, Rochester. How do I look? Fine, but you better put your glasses on. Oh, I'm not going to wear my glasses. They, they make me look old. But you don't see too well without them. Rochester, I only need my glasses for reading. Now, let's see. I think I'll take a cop, uh, top coat with me. In case I... I'll get it. Oh, hello, Phil. I'm Mary. <laughs> oh, 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 happy Easter, Mary. Well, I'm ready to go walking if you are. I'm ready, Jack. But aren't you going to say anything about my new dress? Let's see. Say, it's very pretty. But, Mary, isn't it kind of daring? Well, no, this is the latest style. It's called a plunging neckline. Well, you better grab it fast, sister. It's getting away from you. <laughs> oh, don't be silly, Jack. Plunging necklines are the latest style. All the girls will be wearing them today. They will? Yes. Oh, Rochester, bring me my glasses. <laughs> Thanks. Now, come on, Mary. Let's go to the boulevard and stroll in the Easter parade. <laughs> Gee, there are a lot of people on Wilshire Boulevard, aren't there, Mary? Yeah, and everybody's dressed so nice. Well, so are you. See, that new hat you're wearing is really cute. Where'd you get it? The May Company. They give me all my clothes. The May Company gives you all your clothes? See, that's funny. You've been working for me for the past 15 years. I know. They send me food, too. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice of them. Hey, Jack. What? How far do you think we ought to walk? Oh, I don't know. Probably as far as La Brea. And then we'll... Jack, look who's coming this way. Isn't that one of the boys in your beavers club? Oh, yes. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Joey. Hey, that's a mighty cute rabbit you have there. Yeah, it's my Easter bunny. I'm taking him over to Mr. Benny's house to feed him. To my house to feed him? Why? My father says you got more lettuce than anyone in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Did you just get this rabbit, Joey? Oh, no. I got him last Easter. In fact, I had two of them. Come on, Mary. Let's go. <laughs> In a minute, Jack. Uh, what happened to your other rabbit, Joey? I don't know. He just disappeared around Christmas time. Mary, let's go. <laughs> uh, Joey, exactly when did your other rabbit disappear? It was December 23rd. Well, thanks for telling me. Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> you know, Mary... Oh, I... quiet. You and your mink Christmas presents. <laughs> that was just a coincidence. I happened to get a mink with pink eyes. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mary... But strolling along the boulevard today reminds me of that picture we saw with Fred Astaire and Judy Garland. You mean Easter Parade? Yeah, that's the one. Remember at the start of the picture when Fred Astaire was walking along Fifth Avenue singing that song and the people all answered him? How did that song go again? Oh, yes, I remember it now. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter! It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter! My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Isn't that nice, Mary? They all answered us just like in the picture. Gee, I'll never forget how... Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary, look. Look. Huh? Look, stepping up on the curb. Get a load of those legs. Well, who is it? The conductor on the super cheap. (laughs) 
Now, come on, Mary. we got to keep up with the crowd, you know. I want to walk all the way down to La Brea. Say, Jack, look. There's Phil Harris standing on the corner. Oh, yes. Hello, Phil. Hi, you Livy, you little Easter bunny. Who's that egg you got with you? <laughs> Don, I forgot to take off my bathing cap. <laughs> Say, Phil, Mary and I are strolling down Wilshire. Want to join us? No, no, Jackson. The Chamber of Commerce wants me to stand here till another bus comes by. Another bus? Yeah, I'm the grand finale of the 95-cent tour. <laughs> what? Them out-of-towners go nuts. Oh, run. Uh, Phil, uh... Phil, aren't you a little conceited? Nah, conceit is when you think you got it and you ain't. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Phil, you've got it. Sixteen silver dollars in a box of Snickers to that gray-haired gentleman with a button shoe. <laughs> Mary, Mary, you talk to him. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Phil... Jack and I are going for a walk. Do you want to join us or not? Oh, I'd love to, Liv, but when I finish here, I've got to go home and take my uncle to the train. I didn't know you had an uncle here. Yeah, he arrived Tuesday on business. Came out here for the eclipse. <laughs> oh, is he, uh... Is he an astronomer? No, a pickpocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackson, when will you learn to still those quivering lips? <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> All right. So long, Phil. So long, Livy, you dove. See you later. Come on, Mary. Hey, uh, Jackson. What? Don't feel bad. You've got the bluest eyes on Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so long, Phil. Come on, Mary. You know, Mary, Phil kids a lot, but underneath it all, he's really a nice guy. Oh, stop fluttering your eyelashes. Jealous. Now, come on, dollface. We got a long way to walk yet. Walking with you side by side. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Filled my chest with so much pride. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you, you greet, greet all the friends you meet. meet. Happy Easter to you. And uh, bum, 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 bum. Get up. You're not as young as Fred Astaire. I know. He's 38. <laughs> now, come on, Mary. Gosh, what perfect weather. Spring, the skies are clear, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. Well, look who's here. Bonjour, Monsieur Benny. Well, Professor LeBlanc, what a surprise running into you. Hello, Professor. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. Professor, you certainly look nice today. Is that a new Easter suit you're wearing? Mademoiselle, I am a poor violin teacher. I cannot afford to buy new suits. Well, what do you do with the money I pay you for my violin lessons? I buy sleeping pills. <laughs> oh, are they, are they any good? No. After a few days, I wake up. Well, it was nice seeing you, Professor, and don't forget, you're giving me a violin lesson next week. I will not forget. I will tie a string around my finger. Good, good. Better I should tie a rope around my neck. <laughs> what? Goodbye, Monsieur Benny. Goodbye. <laughs> Say, Mary, I can't understand why he hates to give me violin lessons. Well, I can't understand it either. You played beautifully. Well, I... Huh? <laughs> See, Mary, that was sweet. What made you say that? Oh, I don't know. Just an impulse. Yesterday, I kicked a cop in the pants. <laughs> oh, well, sometimes you have to let yourself go, you know. Anyway, Mary, we're certainly running into a lot of people we know, aren't we? Yeah. Dum da dum bum ba bum ba bum Happy Easter. Happy Easter. The up ba bum bum you doll face. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Say, Gaitches, 
What is it, Mabel? I feel so elegant walking in the Easter parade. How do you feel? My feet are killing me. But it's my own fault for buying some small shoes. Well, what size did you get? Nine. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. What's the matter? Getting your footing to a size nine shoe is like docking the Queen Mary in a Dixie cup. <laughs> well, look who's talking. Get a load of your shoes. Yeah, they're not so big. They're not. Last year, when we went on our vacation, every hotel we stopped at pasted labels on them. <laughs> well, it's a natural mistake because my shoes are genuine cowhide. Cowhide? Yeah. From the way your toes stick out, it looks like milk and time. <laughs> Gertrude, the next time you talk to me like hey, that, Mabel, I'll... Mabel, look, look. Here comes Jack Benny. Oh, yeah. And look who's with her, Mary Livingston. She didn't have to put on airs with me. I remember when she and I worked at the maid company. Uh, did you used to run into her? Very seldom I was a night watchman. <laughs> look, Mabel, they're coming toward us. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. Meet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Well, Don, Don Wilson. <laughs> hello, Don. <laughs> well, hello, Barry. Oh, hello, Jack. I haven't seen you since uh, you got back from New York. How was your trip? Oh, wonderful, Don, and you'll be happy to know how popular you are. Everybody I ran into was asking about you. Oh, really, Jack? Well, what they want to know? Well, they want to know different things like uh, what you eat for breakfast, what you eat for lunch, what you eat for dinner, what you have for dessert, what you have after dessert, what you eat between meals, what you eat before going to bed at night, all those different things. <laughs> well, that's nice, Jack, but uh, didn't they want to know anything about me on your program? Let's see. Yes, yes, they did, Don. They thought that my last couple of programs weren't quite as funny as usual. They want to know if you ate one of my writers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, I know you're kidding, but I wish you'd stop with that talk. It, it gives everybody the impression I'm fat. All right, Don, I'll stop joking about your size. Say, Don, would you like to walk down Wilshire Boulevard with us? Oh, I'd love to, Mary, but I'm on the other side of the street. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Lift your stomach, Don. Here comes a bus. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll see you later. Come on, Mary. <laughs> Say, Mary, have you got a cigarette? Oh, sure, Jack. I have some right here in my... Oh, gee, I forgot to put them in this purse. Well, there's a drugstore right here on the corner. I'll step in and get some. A feeling love, a feeling tense. Uh, these eight uh, words that make a common sense. Uh, smell, girl, <laughs> smell. Oh, oh, mister. Mister. <laughs> mister, I'd like to buy some... Magazines? No. Sunglasses? No, no. I'd like to buy some... Lifesavers? No, no, but as long as you're guessing and want to play games, I'll give you a hint. Now, what do you do to feel your level best? I loosen my girdle. What do you do? <laughs> well, if you must know, I smoke a Lucky. Well, why didn't you say so? You want a package of Lucky Strikes. That's exactly what I want. Here you are. Thank you. Here's your money. Goodbye. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Bum, 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 ba -bee, ba -bum. Uh, Jack, did you get your cigarette? Yes, yes. Come on, Mary, let's keep on walking. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. <laughs> well, Mr. Kitchell. It's 
Nice running into you today. Oh, thank you, Mr. Benny. And and how are you, Miss Livingstone? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Kitzel, you certainly look nice in those striped pants, cutaway coat, and top hat. Mm-hmm. It's just... <laughs> Yes, sir, it's just right for Easter. Oh, thank you. But I'm also wearing it for sentimental reasons. This is the suit in what I got married. Really? Yeah, I'll never forget the ceremony. It was beautiful. When the preacher asked for the ring, my wife handed it to him, and then... Wait a minute. How come your wife had the ring? We weren't even married, and she went through my pockets already. (laughs) Oh, oh, I see. Well, Mr. Kitzel, it was a pleasure running into you on Easter, but we've got to be moving along. Well, I got to run along, too. This afternoon, I'm having an egg roll. An egg roll? On your front lawn? No, in a Chinese restaurant. (laughs) Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. You know, Mary, it's always nice running into Mr. Kitzel. I don't know, he always seems so cheerful. Hey, bud. Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> me? Yeah. Excuse me, Mary. Yes? What are you doing? Well, we're just strolling along in the Easter parade. How far are you going? Uh, to La Brea. That's fine. What? You said you were going to La Brea, and I said that's fine. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to try to talk me out of it? Not me. This is my day off. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Well, happy Easter. Same to you. Same to you. (laughs) Well, come on, Mary. Nothing. It's all right. We can go to La Brea. (laughs) Come on. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Dana! Oh, Mary. Well, Dana, gee, it's good to see you. Did you have a nice Easter? Oh, sure. I colored Easter eggs all morning, and then I hid them. Uh Uh-huh. And then I told my mother to go look for them. Uh, That must have been fun. No, it was a mess. The eggs splattered all over the walls, the ceiling, and my mother's new dress. Well, Dana, where would you hide the eggs? In the mix master. (laughs) In the mix master? Yeah, it was awful. But, Dana, colored eggs shouldn't splatter. How long did you boil them? Oh, boil them. <laughs> Mary, you take them, will you? Dennis, Jack and I are walking down as far as La Brea. Would you like to join us? Oh, sure. I'm not stuck up. Well, that's nice of you. That's sweet of you, kid. Come on, kid. Could you walk a little faster, Mr. Benny? i got to get home and take my uncle to the train. Sure, we can... <laughs> Your uncle? Yeah, he's here on business. He came Tuesday for the eclipse. Uh, well, uh, Dennis, is he... Mary, Mary, let me take this one. Uh, what did you say your uncle came here for, Dennis? He came here for the eclipse. The um, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> he came for the eclipse, eh? I know, Dennis, he's a pickpocket. No, he's a photographer and he hasn't got a dark room. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's walk on. Hey, Dennis, while we're walking along, why don't you sing something? Well, gee, do you think it'd be all right if right here on the street? Well, sure. Everybody feels good today. They're all singing. Yeah, they all want you to okay. sing, too. Okay. <laughs> Fifth Avenue, the 
photographers will snap up and you'll find that you're in the rotogravure. You or I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade on the avenue. tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. That's why it's so important for you to select and smoke the cigarette of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. For as every smoker knows, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It's not surprising that Luckies are the overwhelming choice of the tobacco experts. Men who can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level, the lucky level, where you feel your best and do your best. So the next time you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Happy Easter, everybody. Don't forget to hear Dennis Day and a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Chesterton Radio, your home for podcasts of works by G.K. Chesterton, plus drama, comedy, mystery, science fiction, big bands, and much more. The soundtrack to your Chesterton Day at ChestertonRadio.com. Less than 3% of the population were in towns of more than 10,000. Most immigrants lived on the land. But cities were beginning to flourish. Revolutionary Philadelphia, with its 40,000 inhabitants, was the first colonial city in size. New York was second, with 25,000. Boston, with 16,000, third. Charleston, the largest city of the South, numbered 12,000. America was growing. And in spite of all adversity, America was destined to continue its growth. Why? Possibly because America was a dream for freedom-loving people, then as it is today. Lucky Strike presents the Jack Benny Program. But first, here's an important message from the National Tobacco Tax Research Council. Smokers, next time you buy cigarettes, remember that over 800,000 tobacco farm families thank you for contributing to their support. And remember also that you help support your government, federal, state, and local. When you buy a pack of cigarettes, the federal government gets eight cents. Most local and state governments get three or four cents more. That's better than a 50% tax on every cigarette you smoke. Yes, in buying cigarettes, over half your packs go for tax. And now, the Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Friends, tear and compare. See for yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. From a newly opened pack, take a cigarette made by any other manufacturer. Carefully tear a thin strip of paper straight down the seam from end to end and gently remove the tobacco. In tearing, be sure not to loosen or dig into the tobacco. Now, do exactly the same with a lucky strike. Then compare. Some cigarettes are too loosely packed. Some even fall apart. 
But look at that Lucky. See how it stays together, a perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco. Now, what does this mean to you as a smoker? It means exactly this. Because your Lucky is so round and firm and fully packed, you avoid annoying loose ends that spoil the taste, hot spots that burn harsh and dry. Because your Lucky has long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco, it burns evenly, smokes smooth and mild. Yes, tear and compare. Prove to yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. Then make your next carton Lucky Strike. <laughs> Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Solaris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Williams. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Easter Sunday, and in cities all over the country, people are Easter parading. Right now in Beverly Hills, Jack is getting ready for his stroll down Wilshire Boulevard. The moment he's taking a shower and Rochester is laying out his clothes. Mm-hmm. Mr. Benny's been in that shower a long time. But he always stays in there pretty long. He'd get through sooner if he'd sing in the shower like everybody else instead of playing his violin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better lay out his clothes. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. I'm through with my shower. Bring me a nice big towel. The biggest towel we have is the one you took from the Acme Plaza Hotel. <laughs> Well, bring me that. I can't. It's still on the roller. <laughs> well, bring me any towel. I'm cold. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you. Here, Rochester, hang my violin on the line. <laughs> Professor LeBlanc is giving me a lesson tomorrow. Yes, sir. You want your clothes now, boss? Just my shorts. I'm going to do my exercises. Here you are. You've really been doing your exercises regularly, haven't you? That's right, Rochester. I want to look nice and trim on my TV show next Sunday. Well, I'll start with my bending exercises. One, two, three, and four. Bend down, touch the floor. Lift my arms up in the air. Bend down, pick up your hair. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Gee, that's hard to bend down like that. Oh, boy. Now for your knee bends. Ready? Uh-huh. Okay, go. Yeah. Down, up. Down, up. Down, up. Down, up, 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 up. Congratulations, boss. You made it. <laughs> yeah, that's enough for today. I better get dressed. And I think I'll wear my blue suit today. That all looks swell. I'll get it for you. Good. And Rochester, while I finish dressing, look through my closet, see if any of my clothes need to be sent to the cleaners. Yes, sir. Well, what about this gray suit, boss? I don't know. How does it look to you? Well, it's got a gravy stain on the sleeve, salad dressing on the pants, butter on the cup, coffee on the lapel, and meat sauce all over the vest. It has? Yeah, shall I send it to the cleaners or put it in the refrigerator? <laughs> send it to the cleaners. But first, to Rochester, first go through the pockets and make sure I didn't leave any money in it. Oh, boss, come down. <laughs> Never mind, just do it. Well, I'm all dressed, Rochester. How do I look? Fine, but you'd better put your glasses on. Oh, I'm not going to wear my glasses today. They make me look old. But you you don't see too well without them. Rochester, I just wear my glasses for reading. Now, let's see. I think I'll take a... I'll get it. Oh, hello, Phil. I'm Mary. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, happy Easter, Mary. Well, I'm ready to go walking if you are. Okay. But aren't you going to say anything about my new dress? Say, it's very pretty. Hey, Mary, isn't it kind of daring? You know, Jack, it's been the style for a couple of years. It's called a plunging neckline. Oh, oh. All the girls will be wearing them today. They will? Yes. Rochester, bring my glasses. (laughs) Thanks. 
Come on, Mary. Let's go to the boulevard and stroll in the Easter parade. Gee, there are a lot of people on Wilshire Boulevard, aren't there, Mary? Yeah, and everybody's dressed so nice. Well, so are you. Gee, that new hat you're wearing is really cute. Where'd you get it? The May Company. They give me all my clothes. The May Company gives you your clothes? Gee, that's funny. You've been working for me for the past 15 years. I know. They send me food, too. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice of them. Say, Jack, how far do you think we ought to walk? Oh, I don't know. Probably as far as La Brea, and then we'll... Oh, Jack, look who's coming this way. Isn't that one of the boys in your Beavers Club? Oh, yes. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Joey. Say, that's a mighty cute rabbit you have there. Yes, it's my Easter bunny. I'm taking him over to Mr. Benny's house to feed him. To my house to feed him? Why? My father says he's got more lettuce than anyone in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Did you just get this rabbit, Joey? Oh, no. I got him last Easter. In fact, I had two of them. Come on, Mary, let's go. Um. <laughs> and, um, just a minute, Jack. Uh, what happened to your other rabbit, Joey? I don't know. He just disappeared around Christmas time. Mary, let's go. <laughs> Joey, exactly when did your other rabbit disappear? It was, um, uh, December the 23rd. Well, thanks for telling me. Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Goodbye, Mr. Banks. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> you know, Mary... Oh, quiet. You and your mink Christmas present. <laughs> It was just a coincidence. I happened to get a mink with pink eyes. Oh, say, Mary. Mary, look at that billboard. Opening April 21st at the Philharmonic, Julie Garland and her Variety Review. You know, Mary, strolling down the boulevard today reminds me of that picture we saw a couple of years ago with Judy and Fred Astaire. Oh, you mean Easter Parade? Yeah, that's the one. Remember at the start of the picture when Fred was walking along Fifth Avenue singing that song and the people answered him? How did that song go again? Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Isn't it nice, Mary? They all answered us. Just like they did in the picture. Yeah. Say, Mary, look, there's Bill Harris standing on the corner. Are you sure? Well, he's standing, but I think it's him. <laughs> yes, it is. You're right. Hello, Phil. Hi, Olivia, you little Easter bunny. <laughs> Who's that egg you got with you? <laughs> Darn it, I forgot to take off my bathing cap. <laughs> Say, Phil, Mary and I are strolling down Wilshire. Want to join us? No, Jackson, no. The Chamber of Commerce wants me to stand here till another bus comes by. Another bus? Yeah, I'm the grand finale of the 95-cent tour. <laughs> what? Them out-of-towners go nuts. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, Phil, uh, Phil, aren't you a little conceited? No, no. Conceit is when you think you got it and you ain't. <laughs> Phil, and you've got it? Well, I must have, Jackson. They want me to run for president on the prohibition ticket. <laughs> Mary, Mary, you talk to him, will you? I can't. Look, Phil, Jack and Step I... Step back, Libby. Here comes another bus load of tourists. I gotta take a bow. Hmm. Phil, Jack and I are going for a walk. Do you want to join us or not? I'd love to, Mary, but some of my musicians are going to pick me up to have a little card game and they need a fifth for bridge. Phil, you mean a fourth for bridge? No, a fifth. They play and I pour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you can always depend on a feed line from that gray-haired gentleman with the button shoe. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. All right. So long, Phil. Hey, so long, Olivia. See you later. <laughs> Come on.
Come on, doll face. We got a long way to walk yet. Walking with you side by side, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Fills my chest with so much pride, happy Easter. Happy Easter. My oh me, there's so much to sing as you stroll the avenue. And you you greet all the friends you meet, happy Easter to you. Gosh, what perfect weather. Spring, the skies are clear, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. Hey, look who's here, my violin teacher. Bonjour, Monsieur Benin. Well, Professor LeBlanc, what a surprise running into you. Hello, Professor. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Well, Professor, you certainly look nice today. Is that a new Easter suit you're wearing? Mademoiselle, I am a poor violin teacher. I cannot afford to buy new suits. Well, what do you do with the money I pay you for my violin lesson? I buy sleeping pills. (laughs) Oh, are they any good? No. After a few days, I wake up. (laughs) Oh, well, it was nice seeing you, Professor. And don't forget you're giving me a violin lesson tomorrow. I will not forget. I will tie a string around my finger. Good, good. Better I should tie a rope around my neck. (laughs) What? Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye. I can't understand why he hates to give me violin lessons. I can't understand it either. You played beautifully. Well, I... Huh? Mary, that was sweet. What made you say that? Oh, I don't know. Just an impulse. Yesterday, I kicked a cop in the pants. (laughs) Sometimes you have to let yourself go, you know. Anyway, Mary, we're certainly running into a lot of people we know, aren't we? Yeah. Yum bum 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 bum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yum bum 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 bum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My oh me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue, and you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. You know, Daichu, it's nice getting a day off. It's your rest night. Well, getting away from that CBS switchboard. Yeah. Oh, God, should I feel so elegant walking in the Easter parade. How do you feel? My feet are killing me. <laughs> but it's my own fault for buying such small shoes. Well, what size did you get? Nine. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. What's the matter? Getting your foot in a size nine shoe is like docking the Queen Mary in a Dixie cup. <laughs> oh, look who's talking. Get a load of your shoes. They're not so big. They're not. Last year, when we went on our vacation, every hotel we stopped at pasted labels on them. <laughs> well, it's a natural mistake because my shoes are genuine cowhide. Cowhide? Yes. Yeah. From the way your toes stick out, it looks like milking time. <laughs> Hey, Mabel, look. Here comes Jack Benny. Yeah. And look who's with him, Mary Livingston. Mabel, they're coming toward us. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yum, dum, dum, da, da, dum, bum, bum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Well, Don, Don Wilson. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. Don, I'm glad I ran into you. You know that story about me in the current issue of Radio Television Mirror? Oh, yes. yes. Well, that same reporter came back to see me yesterday, and he wanted to get some information about you. Oh, really, Jack? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, Jack, it's nice of you to tell me this. I feel flattered. What the reporter want to know? Well, he wanted to know different things, like what you eat for breakfast, what you eat for lunch. What you eat for dinner, what you have for dessert, what you have after dessert, <laughs> what you eat between meals, 
what you eat before going to bed at night, all those different things. Well, that's nice, Jack, but uh, didn't he want to know anything about my work on your program? Yes, yes, he did, Don. He thought that my last couple of shows weren't quite as funny as usual. He wanted to know if you ate one of my writers. (laughs) Oh, Jack, I know you're kidding, but I wish you'd stop with that talk. You're always giving everybody the impression I'm fat. All right, Don, I'll stop joking about your size. Say, Don, would you like to walk down Wilshire Boulevard with us? Oh, I'd love to, Mary, but I'm on the other side of the street. (laughs) Oh, yes. Lift your stomach, Don. Here comes a bus. (laughs) See you later. Come on, Mary. Say, Mary, have you got a cigarette? Oh, sure, Jack. I have some right here. Oh, gee, I forgot to put them in my purse. Well, here's the drugstore. I'll step in and get them. Okay. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? <laughs> Ways of wage, shaving cream, Queenex. No, no. I like to buy some magazines, uh... aspirin, sunglasses, white savers. No, no, no. All I want uh, is seltzer, tootsie rolls, whiting paper. <laughs> can't go into one store. Hold it, mister, hold it. As long as you're guessing and playing games, I'll give you a hint as to what I want. Now, what do you do that relaxes you and gives you pleasure? I take off my girdle. What do you do? (laughs) Well, if you must know, I smoke a lucky lucky strike. (laughs) Well, why didn't you say so? You want to pack a lucky strike? Uh, Here you are. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Wait a minute. Don't go yet. Huh? Aren't you going to open your pack of Wuckies here? Yeah. Well, if you want me to, certainly. There you are. Goodbye. Not yet. Oh. Aren't you going to take out a Wuckie and tear it down the center? <laughs> <laughs> but uh... I make all my customers do it. Well, okay. There. See how the tobacco holds together? No loose ends. No room for air spaces. Hot spots that burn harsh and dry. Wuckies are made from long strands of fresh, clean, good tasting tobacco. That's why Wucky Strikes are my favorite brand. Well, good, good, and thank you for showing me. Happy Weaster. <laughs> Jack, you got the cigarettes? Yes, yes. Come on, Mary. Let's keep walking. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. <laughs> well, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, it's nice running into you today. A mutual pleasure, Mr. Benny. And how are you, Miss Livingstone? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Kitzel, you certainly look nice in those striped pants, cutaway coat, and top hat. Thank you. It's just right for Easter. Oh, thank you. But you know, I'm also wearing it for sentimental reasons. Oh. This is the suit in what I got married. Oh, when you got married? Yes. See, that must have been about 20 years ago. Yeah, funny how a little thing like that sticks with you. (laughs) Yes, yes. Oh. I'll never forget that ceremony when they said, if anyone has any objection to this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yes. A voice from the back hollered, don't marry her. Oh, my goodness. Who was it? Me. I'm a ventriloquist. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Unfortunately. (laughs) Oh, uh, well, Mr. Kissel, it was a pleasure running into you on Easter, but we've got to be moving along. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Kissel. Goodbye. Ah, uh, you know, Mary, it's always nice running into Mr. Kissel. 
I don't know, he seems so cheerful. He's and... fun. <laughs> fun. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> me? Yeah. Excuse me, Mary. Yeah? What are you doing? <laughs> We're just strolling along in the Easter parade. How far are you going? <laughs> to La Brea. That's fine. What? You said you was going to La Brea, and I said that's fine. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you going to try to talk me out of it? Not me. This is my day off. <laughs> Oh, oh. Well, happy Easter. Well, same to you. Same to you. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Uh, what happened? Nothing. It's all right. We can go to La Brea. <laughs> Come on. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Dana! Dennis. Hello, Mary. Hey, Dennis, you having a nice Easter? Oh, sure. I colored Easter eggs all morning and then I hid them. Uh huh. And then I told my mother to go look for them. Ooh, that must have been fun. Oh, no, it was a mess. The eggs splattered all over my mother's new dress, her two nightgowns, and six of my father's shirts. Well, Dennis, where'd you hide the eggs? In the washing machine. <laughs> In the washing machine? Yeah, it was awful. Dennis, I don't understand this. Colored Easter eggs shouldn't splatter. How long did you boil them? Oh, boil them! <laughs> Mary, you take him, will you? I'm still a little sick from Phil. <laughs> Dennis, Jack and I are walking down as far as La Brea. Would you like to join us? Sure, I'm not stuck up. Well, that's mighty decent of you. <laughs> and by the way, Dennis, be sure you're, you're not late for rehearsals for my television show. I won't. And my mother said that it's okay for me to appear on your TV program, Sonny, if you give me proper credit at the end. What do you mean, proper credit? Well, at the end of the program, she wants you to say, Dennis Day may also be seen on his own television show. He may buy his latest recording, I Hear a Rhapsody, at all music stores. He will soon be seen in 20th Century Fox Picture, The Girl Next Door, and take your judo lessons from Yamashita. <laughs> Dennis, who in the world is Yamashita? Oh, that's my mother's business name. <laughs> Say, Dennis, while we're walking along, why don't you sing something? Well, do you think it'll be all right? I mean, here on the street? Well, sure. Everybody feels good today. It's Easter. They're all singing. Okay. <laughs> Avenue, 
The photographers will snap up And you'll find that you're in the rotter's review Oh, I could write a sonnet About your Easter bonnet And of the girl I'm taking to the with your own eyes how Luckies are made better to taste better. From a newly opened pack, take a cigarette made by any other manufacturer. Carefully tear a thin strip of paper straight down the seam from end to end and gently remove the tobacco. In tearing, be sure not to loosen or dig into the tobacco. Now, do exactly the same with a Lucky Strike. Then compare. You'll see some cigarettes are so loosely packed they fall apart. Others have air spaces, hot spots that burn harsh and dry. But you won't find that in a Lucky. Look at that perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco, so free of annoying loose ends that spoil the taste. Notice those long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco, so firmly packed to smoke smooth and even, giving you a milder, better-tasting cigarette. Yes, friends, tear and compare. Prove to yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. Then make your next carton Lucky Strike. Bum, 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 be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday night, immediately after my radio show, I will do my fifth television program of the season. My guest stars will be Dennis Day, Rochester, and one of the world's greatest violinists, Mr. Isaac Stern. I will also play a violin solo. <laughs> That's funny. They told me there would be applause here. <laughs> oh, well, happy Easter, folks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night, presented by Lucky Strike. Consult your newspaper for time and station. The Jack Benny program has been selected as one of the programs to be heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. Transcribe, this is the CBS Radio Network. This is Chesterton Radio, the true, good, and beautiful at ChestertonRadio.com. <laughs> Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Doc. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Easter Sunday, and in cities all over the country, people are parading. Right now in Beverly Hills, Jack is getting ready for his stroll down Wilshire Boulevard, as is his custom every Easter. At the moment, he's taking a shower, and Rochester is laying out his clothes. Hmm. Mr. Barry's been in that shower a long time. But he always stays in there pretty long. He'd get through sooner if he'd sing in the shower like everybody else instead of playing his violin. <laughs> Well, it was pretty clever the way he tied that brush on the end of his violin bow. I'll bet hybrids can't play Love and Bloom and scrub his back at the same time. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss? I'm through with my shower. Hand me my towel. Your towel? All right, the Statlers. <laughs> Don't be so technical when I'm freezing. Here you are. And here's your shorts. Thanks. Gee, that shower was invigorating. You know, Rochester, since I've been dieting, I feel like a new man. I look so much trimmer, don't I? You look about the same to me, boss. Oh, don't be silly. I bet I lost a lot of weight. I'll get on the scale and show you. <laughs> Let's see. 
here's the card. Let me see what it says. You would be a financial success if you weren't such a spendthrift. Oh, scale, calm down. And here, uh, here's my weight. Hmm, 102 pounds. <laughs> Rochester, this scale is way off. I could have told you that when you read your fortune. <laughs> Never mind. Let's check this scale. Rochester, you get on. See how much you weigh, will you? Okay. Let's see if I got a penny. Yeah, here's one. Well, my weight is correct. Well, what does the card say on the other side? Let's see. Tell the previous spendthrift he put in a slug. <laughs> well, it's my scale. I can do what I want. Now, Rochester, did you lay out my clothes? Yes, sir. Your blue suit is on the bed. My blue suit? No, I wore that in the Easter parade last year. I better wear something else. Answer the door, Rochester. I'll pick out a suit. Yes, sir. Rochester always tries to make me look so conservative. This is the Easter parade. I should wear something springy. Let's see, what could I... I know, I'll wear my white suit. I bet it's as good as the year I put it away. Boss, Miss Livingston is here. Oh, yeah, she's walking in the Easter parade with me. Tell her I'll be right out. Okay. What are you putting on that white suit for? I'm going to wear it in the parade. But, boss, I think the blue one would look a lot... Rochester, I'm going to wear the white suit, and that settles it. Okay, okay. Is he ready, Rochester? He will be in a few minutes. Say, Miss Livingston, that's a beautiful dress you've got on. Well, thank you, Rochester. And that belt, are those real diamonds on it? Uh-huh. Well, it sure is beautiful. I've never seen a belt like that. Well, it isn't mine. It belongs to my sister, Babe. Oh. Ring Magazine gave it to her when she retired undefeated. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was light heavy, wasn't she? <laughs> Yes, uh-huh. Oh, hello, Mary. Happy Easter. Uh, happy. Jack, you're not going to wear that white suit. Why not? What's wrong with it? I haven't seen one like that since Admiral Byrd came back from the South Pole. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, if you're going to wear it, at least wipe that tomato soup satin off the lapel. That Thanks. tomato soup what? <laughs> Wipe that tomato soup satin? <laughs> tomato soup stain off the lapel. Well, what for? From a distance, it'll look like a red carnation. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, let's go. See you later, Rochester. Goodbye, boss. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Bye, Rochester. By the way, aren't you going out walking in the Easter parade? Yeah, but first I gotta make a call to a girl I have a blind date with. I gotta tell her about a change in plans. Changing plans? Yeah, I told her to be on the corner of 6th and Central and look for a man wearing a white suit. <laughs> oh, so that's why... Well, wear our blue one. It's your turn to be conservative. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. Gee, there are a lot of people out walking on Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah. You know, this is a wonderful time of the year. I know there's something in the air, a spirit of awakening, of, of romance. Makes me feel so young. And you know what they say, Mary? In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to love. <laughs> Give me your hand, Jack. Gee, do you feel romantic, too? No, we're coming to a curb, and I don't want you to fall on your face. <laughs> Who's coming this way? Isn't that one of the boys in your Beavers Club? Oh, yes. Oh, it's little Joey Hudson. Well, hello, Joey. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hey, dig that crazy carnation. <laughs> See, I told you, Mary. Goodbye, Joey. So long, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, Joey. 
Bye, champ. It's my sister's belt. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. Hey, Mary, look at that poster in front of the theater. It's Rita Hayworth and Salome doing the dance of the seven veils. Boy, I'd like to see that in three dimensions. <laughs> Gee, she's beautiful. Jack, your glasses are steaming up. Let's go. <laughs> Say, look. That theater across the street is showing a revival of Easter Parade with Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. Oh, yes. Remember how cute that picture started? Fred was walking along Fifth Avenue singing that song, and the people answered him. How did that song go again? Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Isn't it right, Mary? They all answered us, just like they did in the picture. Yeah. Say, Mary, isn't that Bob Crosby and his wife? Where? Walking on the other side of the street. Oh, yes. Well, hurry up. Let's cross the street and join them. But, Jack, it's the Easter parade, and maybe they'd rather walk alone. Oh, don't be silly, Mary. Bob would be insulted if he thought we saw him and didn't say hello. Say, June, isn't that Mary Livingston across the street there? Well, yes. It does look like Mary. But I wonder who that is with her. Well, I don't know, but from here he looks like Admiral Byrd. <laughs> Say, whoever he is, he's trying to attract our attention. He's waving his hand. Now he's waving his hat. Now he's waving his hair. It's Jack. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed that he's this far down on Wilshire. He usually never gets past the California bank. <laughs> Gee, Bob, I hope he doesn't join us. Well, why? Well, I like Jack. But look at the way he's dressed. Well, just keep walking straight ahead, and we'll pretend that we haven't even seen him. Oh, Bob! Bob! Keep walking, honey. There are a lot of Bobs. <laughs> oh, Bob! Bob Crosby! Keep walking, honey. There's another Bob Crosby in Encino. <laughs> oh, Bing's brother! He's got me. Uh, hello, kids. Why, Jack Benny of all people. Gee, what a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. Say, that's a beautiful outfit you've got on. That mink stole is just exquisite. It sure is. Is it new? Oh, no. Bob bought it for me last year when he was with Campbell Soup. <laughs> with Campbell Soup? You know, the outfit that made your carnation. <laughs> We better be running along now. Yes, Bob. But aren't you going to walk with us? Oh, gee, we'd love to, Jack, but the kids are home all alone. We just got to get back to them. See you later. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Walking with you side by side. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Fills my chest with so much pride. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. That was nice running into Bob and June. Huh? Yes, it was. Gee, what perfect weather. Spring, the skies are clear, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. Gee, that Rita Hayworth is beautiful. <laughs> Mary, we ought to see that picture. Well, look who's coming over. My my violin teacher. Bonjour, Monsieur Benny. <laughs> well, Professor LeBlanc, what a surprise running into you. Hello, Professor. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. <laughs> Pro <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you certainly look nice today. Is that a new Easter suit you're wearing? Mademoiselle. I am a poor violin teacher. I cannot afford to buy new suits. Well, what do you do with the money I pay you for my violin lessons? I buy sleeping pills. <laughs> oh, 
Are they any good? No, after a few days, I wake up. Uh, well, it was nice seeing you, Professor, and don't forget you're giving me a violin lesson tomorrow. I will not forget. I will tie a string around my finger. Oh, good, good. Better I should tie a rope around my neck. <laughs> what? Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Mary, I can't understand why he hates to give me violin lessons. I can't understand it either. You play beautifully. I think you're as good a violinist as Fritz Chrysler or Isaac Stern. Well, I... Oh, Mary, that was sweet. What made you say that? I don't know. Wearing this belt has made me a little punch drunk. <laughs> Look, Mary. Duh, a flock of them flew over that time. Stop. Now, come on, Mary. Let's keep walking. <clears throat> Yum, bum, bum, ba da 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 dum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You're so cute in that old white suit. Happy Easter. Hey, Happy Easter. Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see at Strolly Avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Well, Don, Don Wilson. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Don. Are you walking in the parade, too? No, no, I'm on my way home. I was just on a quiz program. You were on a quiz program? Yeah, I almost won the jackpot. I answered every question correctly but the last one. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, what did they ask you, Don? Well, the first question was, what does LSMFT stand for? Naturally, I said LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike Means Fine Tobacco. Well, naturally. Yeah. Then they asked me, uh, why are Lucky Strike cigarettes so popular? And I told them it was because people get the one thing they want most in a cigarette, better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Well, that was certainly the correct answer. Uh, Don, what was the question that you missed? Well, it was pretty tough. They asked me who was Secretary of State under President Rutherford B. Hayes. What'd you say? I said, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. <laughs> Don, wait a minute. They asked you who was the Secretary of State under President Rutherford B. Hayes, and you said, nothing, no nothing beats better taste? Why did you say that? I didn't know the answer, so I took a wild guess. <laughs> Well, Don, I'm surprised at you, a college man, not knowing who was the Secretary of State under Rutherford B. Hayes. Well, Jack, do you know? Certainly. It was William M. Everts. Any schoolboy would know that. Especially if he went to school with Rutherford B. Hayes. <laughs> Quiet, champ. <laughs> See you later. Come on, Mary. Saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yum, bum, bum, da da dum, 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 Rita Hayworth. Happy Easter. <laughs> My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you'll greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Gosh, there are a lot of people out today. You know, it seems like. Uh, hello, Mr. Bunny. Happy Easter. Huh? <laughs> Oh, happy Easter, Mr. Mr. Don't you remember me? I'm the clerk that waited on you at the bakery shop. In the in the bakery shop? Yeah, don't you remember? You came in and I sold you chocolate cake, some donuts, some pastry, and a half a dozen Cimarron rolls. <laughs> Say, Mary, this is the fellow I told you about. He can't pronounce cinnamon. I can't, though. All right, let's hear you say cinnamon. Cimarron. You see, Mary? Look, mister, it's such a simple word. You just pronounce it like it's spelled. C-I-N-N-A-M-O-N. C-I-N-N-A-M-O-N? Yes, yeah, Cimarron. <laughs> 
thanks, lady. It's easy when you spell it first. Yes, yes, it's easy. <laughs> well, come on, Mary. Such a lovely day, happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Well, Mr. Kitchell. Mr. Kitzel, it's nice running into you today. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And how are you, Miss Livingston? Oh, I'm just fine, thank you. Mr. Kitzel, you certainly look nice in those striped pants, cutaway coat, and top hat. It's just right for Easter. Thank you, but I'm also wearing it for sentimental reasons. This is the suit in what I got married. <laughs> you, you wore it when you got married? Yeah. That must have been about 20 years ago. Huh? Yeah, it's funny how a little thing like that sticks with you. <laughs> yes, yes. But, Mr. Benny, I'll never forget that ceremony when they said if anybody has any objections to this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah? A voice from the back hollered, don't marry her. Oh, my goodness, who was it? Me, I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Mm, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, well, Mr. Kitzel, it was a pleasure running into you on Easter, but we've got to be moving along now. Well, I got to run along, too. I'm going to see a wonderful picture. What is it? Rita Hayworth in Salome. Rita Hayworth in... Uh... Mr. Binney, what's happening to your glasses? <laughs> Mary, where'd he go? Where'd he go? He's standing right here. Oh, 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 yes, yeah. Well, goodbye. Where are you? Well, goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Well, goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Happy Easter. Same to you, Mr. Benny, and you too, Miss Livingston. Well, thank you, Mr. Kitzel. You know, Mary, it's always nice running into Mr. Kitzel. He seems so cheerful and... Hey, look, Mary, there's a photographer taking pictures of couples on the street. Oh, yes. I'm going to have him take our picture. Oh, no, Jack. I'm not going to have a picture taken with you wearing that suit. <laughs> All right, I'll have one taken myself. Oh, Mr. Mr. I'd like to... I'd like to have my picture taken. Well, good. Just stand over there, Admiral. <laughs> I'm not Admiral Burke. Now, how would you like me to pose? Well, first, I'd better line you up. There, that does it. Now, would you mind rolling your trousers up above the knee? Why, do you want to see my legs in the picture? Uh, no, but the less I get of that suit, the better. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I've had enough insults from you. Hey, hold still. I've got you in focus. Now, open your mouth and smile. Like this? Ryder. 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 Why do you want my mouth open so wide? The less I get in that face, the better, too. <laughs> now, cut that out. If you're a photographer, I'm a monkey's uncle. You have a penis. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I'll get my picture taken some other time. How a guy like that ever expects people... Jack, roll down your pants leg. Oh, oh, oh. Well, come on, Mary. We'll walk as far as La Brea. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Yeah. Keep 
keep walking, Mary. Oh. Jack, it's Easter. Be nice to him. Oh, all right. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis, Mary and I are walking down as far as La Brea. Would you like to join us? Sure, I'm not stuck up. <laughs> Say, Dennis, you're really dressed up today. Is that a new suit? Yeah, I want it on a quiz program. On a quiz program? Uh-huh. I answered all the questions correctly. You? You knew the answers to all the questions? Uh-huh. Well, well, what did they ask you, Dennis? Well, first they asked me what my name was, and I told them Dennis Day. Gosh, you remember. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they asked me what holiday we celebrate on March 17th, and quicker the flash, I said St. Patrick's Day. Well, you're a whiz. And then they asked me who was Secretary of State under President Rutherford B. Hayes. Uh-huh. And I told them William M. Everts. Dana. That's right. That's wonderful. How did you know? I didn't know. I took a wild guess. <laughs> Dennis, you took a wild guess and it worked? It worked when they asked me my name, too. <laughs> Jack, we're coming to the La Brea tar pit. You grab his left arm and I'll grab Be him. nice to him. Be nice to him. That's what you told me to do. Say, Dennis, instead of talking and annoying everybody, why don't you sing something? Well, gee, do you think it'd be all right out here on the street? Sure, everybody feels good today. It's Easter. Okay. We've been standing here for 15 minutes. Let's go on home. Well. Well, I'm going anyway because i got to get home. Okay. Goodbye, Mary. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Jack. See you tomorrow. How many tickets, please? Just one down front. <laughs> Thank you. Gee, it's dark in here. I'll find a seat. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Whoops! I'm sorry. Hello, Mr. Benny 
program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Needs the comfort and inspiration of religious faith, for it is faith which helps hold our families together, builds moral and spiritual character. And today, perhaps more than ever before, there's a need to turn to a way of life based on the enduring principles of religion. There are a great many programs of religious nature on NBC Radio, which you'll enjoy hearing this Sunday. Among them, The Art of Living, The National Radio Pulpit, Eternal Light, The Lutheran Hour, The Catholic Hour, and The Hour of Decision, conducted by Billy Graham. These are but a few of the broadcasts that will bring you inspiration and comfort, not only this Sunday, but on the Sundays to come. Of course, the Easter message will be the highlight event this week. We know you'll enjoy hearing them as a supplement to your visit to the church of your choice. And when you do go to church this Sunday, take the whole family with you. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. As a smoker, you know how vitally important freshness is to your enjoyment of a cigarette. Well, the makers of Lucky's know that, too. That's why every pack of Lucky's is extra tightly sealed to keep in the better taste that has made Lucky's famous. Yes, any Lucky smoker will tell you that Lucky's taste better, not only fresher, but cleaner and smoother, too. That's because fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco goes into every Lucky. As you know, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And Lucky's are definitely made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Yes, fine tobacco in a better made cigarette just naturally adds up to better taste for you. So next time you buy cigarettes, try a carton of Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. program starring Jack Billy with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Easter Sunday, and in cities all over the country, people are parading. Right now, in Beverly Hills, Jack is getting ready for his stroll down Wilshire Boulevard, as is his custom every Easter. At the moment, he's taking a shower, and Rochester is laying out his clothes. Hmm. Mr. Barry's been in that shower a long time. But he always stays in there pretty long. He'd get through sooner if he'd sing in the shower like everybody else instead of playing his violin. Well, it was pretty clever the way he tied that brush on the end of his violin bow. I'll bet Hyman can't play Love and Bloom and scrub his back at the same time. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boy? I'm through with my shower. Hand me my towel. Your towel? All right, the Statler's. <laughs> Don't be so technical when I'm freezing. Here you are. And here's your shorts. Thanks. See, that shower was invigorating. You know, Rochester, since I've been dieting, I feel like a new man. I look so much trimmer, don't I? You look about the same to me, boss. Oh, don't be silly. I bet I lost a lot of weight. I'll get on the scale and show you. <laughs> Let's see, here's the card. Let me see what it says. You would be a financial success if you weren't such a spendthrift. <laughs> oh, scale, calm down. <laughs> and here, uh, here's 
my weight. Hmm. 102 pounds. <laughs> Rochester, this scale is way off. I could have told you that when you read your fortune. <laughs> Never mind. Let's check this scale. Rochester, you get on. See how much you weigh. Will you? Okay. Let's see if I got a penny. Yeah, here's one. Well, my weight is correct. So what does the card say on the other side? Let's see. Tell the previous fence if he put in a slug. <laughs> well, it's my scale. I can do what I want. Now, Rocha, did you lay out my clothes? Yes, sir. Your blue suit is on the bed. My blue suit? No, I wore that in the Easter parade last year. I better wear something else. Answer the door, Rochester. I'll pick out a suit. Yes, sir. Rochester always tries to make me look so conservative. This is the Easter parade. I should wear something springy. Let's see. What could I... I know. I'll wear my white suit. I bet it's as good as the year I put it away. Boss, Miss Livingston is here. Oh, yeah. She's walking in the Easter parade with me. Tell her I'll be right out. Okay. What are you putting on that white suit for? I'm going to wear it in the parade. But, boss, I think the blue one would look a lot... Rochester, better. I'm going to wear the white suit, and that settles it. Okay, okay. Is he ready, Rochester? He will be in a few minutes. Say, Miss Livingston, that's a beautiful dress you've got on. Well, thank you, Rochester. Oh, hello, Mary. Happy Easter. Uh, happy. Jack, you're not going to wear that white suit. Why not? What's wrong with it? I haven't seen one like that since Admiral Byrd came back from the South Pole. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, if you're going to wear it, at least wipe that tomato soup satin off the lapel. That Same. tomato soup what? <laughs> I've heard everything. <laughs> wipe that tomato soup satin? <laughs> Stain off the lapel. Well, what for? From a distance, it'll look like a red carnation. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, let's go. See you later, Rochester. Goodbye, boss. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Bye, Rochester. By the way, aren't you going out walking in the Easter parade? Yeah, but first I gotta make a call to a girl I have a blind date with. I gotta tell her about a change in plans. Change in plans? Yeah, I told her to be on the corner of 6th and Central and look for a man wearing a white suit. <laughs> So that's why, well, wear our blue one. It's your turn to be conservative. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. See, there are a lot of people out walking on Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah. You know, this is a wonderful time of the year. I know there's something in the air, a spirit of awakening, of, of romance. Makes me feel so young. And you know what they say, Mary? In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to love. <laughs> Give me your hand, Jack. Gee, do you feel romantic, too? No, we're coming to a curb, and I don't want you to fall on your face. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Jack, look who's coming this way. Isn't that one of the boys in your Beavers Club? Oh, yes. Oh, it's little Joey Hudson. Well, hello, Joey. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hey, dig that crazy carnation. <laughs> See, I told you, Mary. Say, that's a mighty cute rabbit you have there. Yes, it's my Easter bunny. I'm taking him over to Mr. Benny's house to feed him. To my house to feed him? Why? My father says you've got more lettuce than anyone in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Goodbye, Mr. Banks. Goodbye, goodbye. You know, Mary, strolling down the boulevard today reminds me of that picture we saw a few years ago with Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. Oh, you mean Easter Parade? Yeah, that's the one. Remember at the start of the picture when Fred was walking along Fifth Avenue singing that song and the people answered him? How did that song go again? <laughs> Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. 
And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Isn't it night, Mary? They all answered it, just like they did in the picture. Yeah. Say, Mary, isn't that Bob Crosby and his wife? Where? Walking on the other side of the street. Oh, yeah. Well, hurry up. Let's cross the street and join them. But, Jack, it's the Easter parade, and maybe they'd rather walk alone. Oh, don't be silly, Mary. Bob would be insulted if he thought we saw him and didn't say hello. Say, June, isn't that Mary Livingston across the street there? Well, yes. It does look like Mary. But I wonder who that is with her. Well, I don't know, but from here he looks like Admiral Byrd. <laughs> Say, whoever he is, he's trying to attract our attention. He's waving his hand. Now he's waving his hat. Now he's waving his hair. It's Jack. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed that he's this far down on Wilshire. He usually never gets past the California bank. <laughs> Gee, Bob, I hope he doesn't join us. Well, why? Well, I like Jack. But look at the way he's dressed. Well, just keep walking straight ahead, and we'll pretend that we haven't even seen him. Oh, Bob! Bob! Keep walking, honey. There are a lot of Bobs. <laughs> oh, Bob! Bob Crosby! Keep walking, honey. There's another Bob Crosby in Encino. <laughs> oh, Bing's brother! He's got me. <laughs> well, hello, kids. Why, Jack Benny of all people. Gee, what a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. Say, that's a beautiful outfit you've got on. That mink stole is just exquisite. It sure is. Is it new? Oh, no. Bob brought it for me when he was with Campbell's Soup. <laughs> with Campbell's Soup? You know, the outfit that made your carnation. <laughs> Well, we better be running along now. Yes, Bob. But aren't you going to walk with us? Oh, gee, we'd love to, Jack, but the kids are home all alone. We just got to get back to them. See you later. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Walking with you side by side. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Fills my chest with so much pride. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And to greet all the friends you meet, happy Easter to you. That was nice running into Bob and June. Yes, it was. Gee, what perfect weather. Spring, the skies are clear, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. Hey, look who's here, my violin teacher. Bonjour, Monsieur Benin. Well, Professor LeBlanc, this is the third year in a row we've met in the Easter Parade. You, I meet. Heifetz is always on the other side of the street. <laughs> What's the difference? We're both violinists. Sacre bleu. If we were in France, I would challenge you to a duel. Huh? Yes, sir, Heifetz. There is a musician, a man with a heart, with a soul. When he plays his violin, I hear birds in the trees... Angels in paradise. Well, what does it sound like when I play? Riot in cell block 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Professor, this is Miss Livingston. She was at the house the last time you gave me a lesson. Remember? How could I forget? She applied the tourniquet to my wrist. <laughs> oh, yes, that was such an unfortunate accident. Unfortunate, yes. Accident, no. <laughs> Oh, Professor, you wouldn't do a thing like that on purpose. Mademoiselle, when I go to give other people lessons, before I leave the house, I ask myself, have I got enough rosin? Have I got my violin stand? Have I got my music? When I go to Monsieur Beniz, I ask myself only one question. How am I fixed for blades? <laughs> Now, just a second, Professor LeBlanc. Just what's wrong with my violin playing? Oh, Monsieur Benny, if you and Kid Gavalan would only learn to use your right hand. <laughs> well, I 
must go now. All right, Professor. Don't forget my lesson next Thursday and have a nice Easter. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mary, I can't understand why he hates to give me violin lessons. I can't understand it either. You play beautifully. Well, I... Huh? Mary, that was sweet. What made you say that? Oh, I don't know. Just an impulse. Yesterday, I kicked a cop in the pants. <laughs> Sometimes you have to let yourself go, you know. Anyway, Mary, we're certainly running into a lot of people we know, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Yum, bum, bum, ba da 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 dum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter! You're so cute in that old white suit. Happy Easter. Hey, Happy Easter! Easter. My old me, there's so much to see and so we have a new. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Well, Don, Don Wilson. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Say, Don, would you like to walk down Wilshire Boulevard with us? Oh, I'd love to, Mary, but I'm on the other side of the street. <laughs> Oh, yes. Lift your stomach, Don. Here comes a bus. <laughs> See you later. Come on, Mary. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Say, Mary, have you got a cigarette? Oh, sure, Jack. I have some right here. And I... Oh, gee, I forgot to put them in my purse. Well, here's the drugstore. I'll step in and get some. Okay. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? <laughs> Ways of wage, shaving cream, Kleenex. No, no. I like to buy some magazines, uh, aspirin, sunglasses, white savers. No, no, no. All I want is seltzer, Tootsie Rolls, whiting paper. <laughs> I can't go into one store. Hold it, Mister. Hold it. As long as you're guessing and playing games, I'll give you a hint as to what I want. Now, what do you do that relaxes you and gives you pleasure? I take off my girdle. What do you do? <laughs> well, if you must know, I smoke a lucky, a lucky strike. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? You want to pack a lucky strike? Uh, yeah. There you are. Thank you. Well, goodbye. Wait a minute. Don't go yet. Huh? Aren't you going to open your pack of luckies here? Well, if you want me to, certainly. There you are. Goodbye. Not yet. Oh. Aren't you going to take out a walkie and tear it down the center? <laughs> but uh, I make all my customers do it. Well, okay. There. See how the tobacco holds together? Wuckies are made from long strands of flesh... Queen, good tasting tobacco. <laughs> That's why Wucky Strikes are my favorite plant. Well, good, good, and thank you for showing me. Happy Weaster. <laughs> Jack, you got the cigarette? Yes, yes. Come on, Mary. Let's keep walking. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. <laughs> well, Mr. Kitchen. Mr. Kitzel, it's nice running into you today. A mutual pleasure, Mr. Benny. And how are you, Miss Livingston? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Kitzel, you certainly look nice in those striped pants, cutaway coat, and top hat. Thank it's you. It's just right for Easter. Oh, thank you. But you know, I'm also wearing it for sentimental reasons. Oh. This is the suit in what I got married. Oh, when you got married? Yes. See, that must have been about 20 years ago. Yeah, funny how a little thing like that sticks with you. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, my, I'll never forget that ceremony. When they said, if anyone has any objection to this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yes. A voice from the back hollered, don't marry her. Oh, my goodness, who was it? Me, I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Mm, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, well, Mr. Kitzel, it was a pleasure running into you on Easter, but we've got to be moving along. Goodbye, Mr. Binney. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye. You know, Mary, it's always nice running into Mr. Kitzel. He seems so cheerful and... Hey, look, Mary, there's a photographer taking pictures of couples on the street. Oh, yes. I'm going to have him take our picture. Oh, no, Jack. I'm not going to have a picture taken with you wearing that suit. All right, I'll have one taken myself. Oh, Mr. Mr. <laughs> I'd like to... I'd like to have my picture taken. Well, oh, good. Just stand over there, Admiral. I'm not Admiral Burr. Now, how would you like me to pose? Well, first, I'd better line you up. There, that does it. Now, would you mind rolling your trousers up above the knees? Why, do you want to see my legs in the picture? No, but the less I get of that suit, the better. Now, wait a minute. I've had enough insults from you. Here, hold still. I've got you in focus. Now, open your mouth and smile. Like this? Rider, rider, rider. Why do you want my mouth open so wide? The less I get of that face, the better. <laughs> now cut that out. If you're a photographer, I'm a monkey's uncle. You have a penis. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I'll get my picture taken some other time. How a guy like that ever expects people... Jack, roll down your pants leg. Oh, oh, oh. Well, come on, Mary. We'll walk as far as La Brea. Oh, Fun. Fun. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Excuse me, Mary. Yeah? What are you doing? <laughs> We're just strolling along in the Easter parade. How far are you going? <laughs> to La Brea. That's fine. What? You said you was going to La Brea, and I said that's fine. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you going to try to talk me out of it? Not me. This is my day off. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, happy Easter. Well, same to you. Same to you. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Uh, what happened? Nothing. It's all right. We can go to La Brea. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Never saw such a lovely day, Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Dana! Dennis. Hello, Mary. Hey, Dennis, you having a nice Easter? Oh, sure. I colored Easter eggs all morning, and then I hid them. Uh-huh. And then I told my mother to go look for them. Oh, that must have been fun. Oh, no, it was a mess. The eggs splattered all over my mother's new dress, her two nightgowns, and six of my father's shirts. Well, Dennis, where'd you hide the eggs? In the washing machine. <laughs> In the washing machine? Yeah, it was awful. Dennis, I don't understand this. Colored Easter eggs shouldn't splatter. How long did you boil them? Oh, boil them! <laughs> Dennis, Jack and I are walking down as far as La Brea. Would you like to join us? Sure, I'm not stuck up. Well, that's mighty decent of you. <laughs> Say, Dennis, while we're walking along, why don't you sing something? Well, do you think it'll be all right? I mean, here on the street? Well, sure. Everybody feels good today. It's Easter. They're all singing. Okay. In your Easter bonnet With all the frills 
smiles upon it. You'll be the grandest lady in the parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look you over, I'll be the proudest fellow in the Photographers will snap off, and you'll find that you're in the road to gravel. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade. On the avenue, Fifth Avenue, the photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the road of gravure. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet. And of the girl I'm taking to the star. Ladies and gentlemen. One tiny burning ember from a campfire, a lighted and discarded match, or cigarette left to smolder or thrown from a car window can cause a frightfully destructive forest fire. So help prevent forest fires that destroy millions of acres of timberland, cripple watersheds, and blast our natural resources that are so urgently needed. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, a word from the sweetheart of Lucky Strike. Hi, friends. This is Dorothy Collins. I'd like to take a minute of your time to talk about taste. Isn't it true that you enjoy a good, say, steak dinner because of the way it tastes? Well, I think the same goes for a cigarette. You like it because of the way it tastes. Really, friends, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is... Lucky's tastes better. Here's why this is true. First, LSMST. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. And second, Lucky's are made better to taste better. Made round and firm and fully packed. Made to draw freely and smoke evenly when you light one up. Think of it. Fine tobacco in a truly better-made cigarette. Don't you think a cigarette like that will bring you all the smoking enjoyment you could possibly want? Try a carton of Lucky's soon. You'll see that smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. So you be happy. Go Lucky. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Is that you, boss? Yes, Rochester, I'm back. How was the Easter parade? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Everybody was dressed so nice. I ran into so many people I know. You know, I walk so far, my feet hurt. They do? Yes. I think I'll soak them in some hot water. Bring me that big pan in the kitchen. I'm sorry, boss, but somebody else is already using that pan. Who? The sound man. His feet hurt worse than yours. <laughs> oh, yes. Good night, folks.
The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned for Amos and Andy, following immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX AM and FM Los Angeles. Art Frost, 100 Ladies and gentlemen, the chief hope of our enemies is to divide the United States along racial and religious lines and thereby conquer us. Let's not spread prejudice. A divided America is a weak America. Through our behavior, we encourage the respect of our children and make them better neighbors to all races and religions. Remind them that being good neighbors has helped make our country great and kept her free. Thank you. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that tastes better. Light up, Lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. This is Don Wilson, friends. And you know, the right time for a lucky is any time you feel like enjoying a really great cigarette. The right place? Well, that's any place you happen to be at the time. It's true, you can depend on a lucky to give you better taste every time it's light up time. That's because of the truly fine tobacco that goes into every Lucky Strike cigarette. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Tobacco that's light and mild and naturally good tasting. And then that fine tobacco is toasted. It's toasted to taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So when you buy your next pack or carton of cigarettes, remember, Lucky's taste better. Matter of fact, a Lucky is the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light up Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Swatchman Quartet, and yours truly, Don. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Easter Sunday, and in cities all over the country, people are parading. Right now in Beverly Hills, Jack is getting ready for his stroll down Wilshire Boulevard, as is his custom every Easter. At the moment, he's taking a shower, and Rochester is laying out his clothes. Hmm. Mr. Benny's been in that shower a long time. But he always stays in there pretty long. He'd get through sooner if he'd sing in the shower like everybody else instead of playing his violin. But it was pretty clever the way he tied that brush on the end of his violin bow. I'll bet hyphens can't play Love and Bloom and scrub his back at the same time. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss? I'm through with my shower. Hand me my towel. Your towel? All right, the Statlers. (laughs) Don't be so technical when I'm freezing. Here you are. And here's your shorts. Thanks. Gee, that shower was invigorating. You know, Rochester, since I've been dieting, I feel like a new man. I look so much trimmer, don't I? You look about the same to me, boss. Oh, don't be silly. I bet I lost a lot of weight. I'll get on the scale and show you. <laughs> Let's see, here's the card. Let me see what it says. You would be a financial success if you weren't such a spendthrift. (laughs) Oh, scale, calm down. (laughs) And here, uh, here's my weight. Hmm, 
102 pounds. <laughs> Rochester, this scale is way off. I could have told you that when you read your fortune. <laughs> Never mind. Let's check this scale. Rochester, you get on. See how much you weigh, will you? Okay. Let's see if I got a penny. Yeah, here's one. Well, my weight is correct. What does the card say on the other side? Let's see. Tell the previous spendthrift he put in a slug. <laughs> It's my scale. I can do what I want. <laughs> now, Rochester, did you lay out my clothes? Yes, sir. Your blue suit is on the bed. My blue suit? No, I wore that in the Easter parade last year. I better wear something else. After the door, Rochester, I'll pick out a suit. Yes, sir. Rochester always tries to make me look so conservative. This is the Easter parade. I should wear something springy. Let's see. What could I... I know. I'll wear my white suit. I bet it's as good as the year I put it away. Boss, Miss Livingston is here. Oh, yeah, she's walking in the Easter parade with me. Tell her I'll be right out. Okay. What are you putting on that white suit for? I'm going to wear it in the parade. But, boss, I think the blue one would look a lot... Rochester, I'm going to wear the white suit, and that settles it. Okay, okay. Is he ready, Rochester? He will be in a few minutes. Say to Miss Livingston, that's a beautiful dress you've got on. Well, thank you, Rochester. Oh, hello, Mary. Happy Easter. Uh, happy... Jack, you're not going to wear that white suit. Why not? What's wrong with it? I haven't seen one like that since Admiral Byrd came back from the South Pole. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, if you're going to wear it, at least wipe that tomato soup satin off the lapel. That Thanks. tomato soup what? <laughs> That tomato soup satin? <laughs> tomato soup stain off the lapel. Well, what for? From a distance, it'll look like a red carnation. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, let's go. See you later, Rochester. Goodbye, boss. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Bye, Rochester. By the way, aren't you going out walking in the Easter parade? Yeah, but first I gotta make a call to a girl I have a blind date with. I gotta tell her about a change in plans. Change in plans? Yeah, I told her to be on the corner of 6th and Central and look for a man wearing a white suit. <laughs> oh, so that's why... Well, wear our blue one. It's your turn to be conservative. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. Gee, there are a lot of people out walking on Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah. You know, this is a wonderful time of the year. I know there's something in the air, a spirit of awakening, of, of romance. It makes me feel so young. And you know what they say, Mary? In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to love. <laughs> Give me your hand, Jack. Gee, do you feel romantic, too? No, we're coming to a curb, and I don't want you to fall on your face. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Jack, look who's coming this way. Isn't that one of the boys in your Beavers Club? Oh, yes. Oh, it's little Joey Hudson. Well, hello, Joey. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hey, dig that crazy carnation. <laughs> See, I told you, Mary. Say, that's a mighty cute rabbit you have there. Yes, it's my Easter bunny. I'm taking him over to Mr. Benny's house to feed him. To my house to feed them? Why? My father says you've got more lettuce than anyone in Beverly Hills. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. Goodbye, Mr. Bank. Goodbye, goodbye. You know, Mary, strolling down the boulevard today reminds me of that picture we saw a few years ago with Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. Oh, you mean Easter Parade? Yeah, that's the one. Remember at the start of the picture when Fred was walking along Fifth Avenue singing that song and the people answered him? How did that song go again? Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. 
And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Isn't it night, Mary? They all answered us, just like they did in the picture. Yeah. Say, Mary, isn't that Bob Crosby and his wife? Where? Walking on the other side of the street. Oh, yes. Well, hurry up. Let's cross the street and join them. But, Jack, it's the Easter parade, and maybe they'd rather walk alone. Oh, don't be silly, Mary. Bob would be insulted if he thought we saw him and didn't say hello. Say, June, isn't that Mary Livingston across the street there? Well, yes. It does look like Mary. But I wonder who that is with her. Well, I don't know, but from here he looks like Admiral Byrd. <laughs> Say, whoever he is, he's trying to attract our attention. He's waving his hand. Now he's waving his hat. Now he's waving his hair. It's Jack. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed that he's this far down on Wilshire. He usually never gets past the California bank. <laughs> Gee, Bob, I hope he doesn't join us. Well, why? Well, I like Jack. But look at the way he's dressed. Well, just keep walking straight ahead and we'll pretend that we haven't even seen him. Oh, Bob! Bob! Keep walking, honey. There are a lot of Bobs. <laughs> oh, Bob! Bob Crosby! Keep walking, honey. There's another Bob Crosby in Encino. <laughs> oh, Bing's brother! He's got me. <laughs> well, hello, kids. Why, Jack Benny of all people. Gee, what a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. Say, that's a beautiful outfit you've got on. That mink stole is just exquisite. It sure is. Is it new? Oh, no. Bob brought it for me when he was with Campbell's Soup. <laughs> with Campbell's Soup? You know, the outfit that made your carnation. <laughs> We better be running along now. Yes, Bob. But aren't you going to walk with us? Oh, gee, we'd love to, Jack, but the kids are home all alone. We just got to get back to them. See you later. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Walking with you side by side. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Fills my chest with so much pride. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And to greet all the friends you meet, happy Easter to you. That was nice running into Bob and June. Huh? Yes, it was. Gee, what perfect weather. Spring, the skies are clear, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. Hey, look who's here, my violin teacher. Bonjour, Monsieur Benny. Professor LeBlanc, this is the third year in a row we've met in the Easter Parade. You, I meet. Heifetz is always on the other side of the street. <laughs> What's the difference? We're both violinists. <laughs> oh, by the way, Professor, this is Miss Livingston. She was at the house the last time you gave me a lesson. Remember? How could I forget? She applied the tourniquet to my wrist. <laughs> Oh, yes, that was such an unfortunate accident. Unfortunate, yes. Accident, no. <laughs> well, I must go now. All right, Professor. Don't forget my lesson next Thursday and have a nice Easter. Goodbye, Miss Company. Goodbye. <laughs> Mary, I can't understand why he hates to give me violin lessons. I can't understand it either. You play beautifully. Well, I... Huh? Mary, that was sweet. What made you say that? Oh, I don't know. Just an impulse. Yesterday, I kicked a cop in the pants. <laughs> Sometimes you have to let yourself go, you know. Anyway, Mary, we're certainly running into a lot of people we know, aren't we? Yeah. <coughs> Yum, bum, bum, ba da 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 dum. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You're so cute in that old white suit. Happy Easter. Hey, Happy Easter. Easter. My old oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet.
greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Well, Don, Don Wilson. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Say, Don, would you like to walk down Wilshire Boulevard with us? Oh, I'd love to, Mary, but I'm on the other side of the street. <laughs> Oh, yes. Lift your stomach, Don. Here comes a bus. <laughs> See you later. Come on, Mary. Say, Mary, have you got a cigarette? Oh, sure, Jack. I have some right here. In my... Oh, gee, I forgot to put them in my purse. Well, here's the drugstore. I'll step in and get some. Okay. Oh, clerk. Yes, yeah, sir. So what can I do for you? <laughs> Ways of wage, shaving cream, Queenex. No, no. I like to buy some magazines, uh, aspirin, sunglasses, wife savers. No, no, no. All I want uh, is seltzer, Tootsie Walls, whiting paper. <laughs> I can't go into one store. Hold it, Mister. Hold it. As long as you're guessing and playing games, I'll give you a hint as to what I want. Now, what do you do that relaxes you and gives you pleasure? I take off my girdle. What do you do? <laughs> well, if you must know, I smoke a lucky, a lucky strike. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? You want a pack of lucky strikes? Uh, yeah. There you are. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Wait a minute. Uh, Don't go yet. Huh? Aren't you going to open your pack of luckies here? Well, if you want me to, certainly. There you are. Goodbye. Not yet. Oh. Aren't you going to take out a wookie? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I make all my customers do it. Well, okay. There. See how the tobacco holds together? Wookies are made from long strands of fresh, clean, good tasting tobacco. <laughs> That's why Wucky Strikes are my favorite brand. Well, good, good. And thank you for showing me. Happy Weaster. <laughs> Jack, you got the cigarettes? Yes, yes. Come on, Mary. Let's keep walking. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see as you stroll the avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. <laughs> well, Mr. Tickle. Mr. Kissel, it's nice running into you today. Unusual pleasure, Mr. Benny. And how are you, Miss Livingston? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Kitzel, you certainly look nice in those striped pants, cutaway coat, and top hat. Thank it's you. It's just right for Easter. Oh, thank you. But you know, I'm also wearing it for sentimental reasons. Oh. This is the suit in what I got married. Oh, when you got married? Yeah. See, that must have been about 20 years ago. Yeah. Funny how a little thing like that sticks with you. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, my, I'll never forget that ceremony. When they said, if anyone has any objection to this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yes. A voice from the back hollered, don't marry her. Oh, my goodness, who was it? Me, I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Kitzel, it was a pleasure running into you on Easter, but we've got to be moving along. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye. Ah, uh, you know, Mary, it's always nice running into Mr. Kitzel. He seems so cheerful and... Hey, look, Mary, there's a photographer taking pictures of couples on the street. Oh, yes. I'm going to have him take our picture. Oh, no, Jack. I'm not going to have a picture taken with you wearing that suit. All right, I'll have one taken myself. Oh, mister, mister. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to have my picture taken. Well, good. Just stand over there, Admiral. <laughs> 
I'm not Admiral Byrd. Now, how would you like me to pose? Well, first, I'd better line you up. There, that does it. Now, would you mind rolling your trousers up above the knees? Why, do you want to see my legs in the picture? Uh, no, but the less I get of that suit, the better. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I've had enough insults from you. Uh, hold still. I've got you in focus. Now, open your mouth and smile. Like this? Rider. 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 Why do you want my mouth open so wide? The less I get of that face, the better, too. <laughs> If you're a photographer, I'm a monkey's uncle. You have a penis. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I'll get my picture taken some other time. <laughs> How a guy like that ever expects people... Jack, roll down your pants leg. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, come on, Mary. We'll walk as far as La Brea. Fun. Oh, Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> me? Yeah. Excuse me, Mary. Yeah? What are you doing? <laughs> We're just strolling along in the Easter parade. How far are you going? <laughs> To La Brea. That's fine. What? You said you was going to La Brea, and I said that's fine. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you going to try to talk me out of it? Not me. This is my day off. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, happy Easter. Well, same to you. Same to you. Come on, Mary. Uh, what happened? Nothing. It's all right. We can go to La Brea. <laughs> Come on. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. You greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Dan! Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. Hey, Dennis, you having a nice Easter? Oh, sure. I colored Easter eggs all morning, and then I hid them. Uh-huh. And then I told my mother to go look for them. Ooh, that must have been fun. Oh, no, it was a mess. The eggs splattered all over my mother's new dress, her two nightgowns, and six of my father's shirts. Well, Dennis, where'd you hide the egg? In the washing machine. In the washing machine? Yeah, it was awful. Dennis, I don't understand this. Colored Easter eggs shouldn't splatter. How long did you boil them? Oh, boil them! <laughs> Dennis, Jack and I are walking down as far as La Brea. Would you like to join us? Sure, I'm not stuck up. Well, that's mighty decent of you. <laughs> Say, Dennis, while we're walking along, why don't you sing something? Well, do you think it'll be all right? I mean, here on the street? Well, sure. Everybody feels good today. It's Easter. They're all singing. Okay. <laughs> Fifth Avenue, 
the photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the rotogravure. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade. On the avenue, Fifth Avenue, the photographers will snap us, and you'll find them you're in the rotogravure. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet. And of the girl I'm taking to the Easter One tiny burning ember from a campfire, a lighted and discarded match, or cigarette left to smolder or thrown from a car window can cause a frightfully destructive forest fire. So help prevent forest fires that destroy millions of acres of timberland, cripple watersheds, and blast our natural resources that are so urgently needed. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, friends. But first, let's hear that catchy Lucky Strike light-up time tune again. Light up the lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up the lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. Yes, sir. When it's light-up time for you, light up a Lucky. You couldn't make a better choice. Here's why. Lucky Strike is the cigarette of fine, light, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And Lucky Strike is the cigarette that's toasted to taste even better. Fine tobacco and it's toasted. That adds up to real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So be happy. Go Lucky. Buy a Cartman. Try them out. When you light up, I'll bet you find a Lucky is the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Is that you, boss? Yes, Rochester, I'm back. How was the Easter Parade? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Everybody was dressed so nice. I ran into so many people I know. You know, I walk so far, my feet hurt. They do? Yes. I think I'll soak them in some hot water. Bring me that big pan in the kitchen. I'm sorry, boss, but somebody else is already using that pan. Who? The sound man. His feet hurt worse than yours. <laughs> oh, yes. Good night, folks. Many programs written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, here's the true tobacco taste you've been looking for. Filter tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich flavor of Tariton's famous quality tobacco and real filtration, too. Filter tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration and used far and wide to purify the air we breathe, the water and beverages we drink. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify Filter Tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.
Ladies and gentlemen, a long time ago it was written that man shall not live by bread alone. In this often quoted line from the Bible, bread is merely a symbol of all material values. And although we in America have the greatest material advantages in the world, they are not enough to bring us complete happiness. We must find that happiness in our spiritual as well as our material lives, in faith as well as bread. In America, one of our most precious heritages is the right to worship as we please, to know the spiritual pleasures of our churches and synagogues. The doors of your places of worship stand open to you, and your religious leaders will welcome you to their services. They also offer you personal and family guidance and the opportunity to become a firm part of your community. Through our churches and synagogues, that community and the families within it can find stability. And as an individual, you can find the peace that only religion can bring. Thus, the religious organizations of America invite you to find yourself through faith and come to church this week. Good night.